When Dune Part 1 was released, I was in my fourth year of medical school in the middle of nowhere. So I had to make the gruelling journey to the nearest IMAX theatre, which was in Manchester, an hour and a half away. <laughs> but anyway, I made a weekend out of it and I had a very enjoyable time. This time around, however, I'm living in Cardiff, the capital city of Wales, and I've got an IMAX theatre about five minutes away driving. So, obviously, I could not miss the release date. So I went to see Dune Part 2 yesterday, and I have some thoughts. First of all, just in case you're not familiar, Dune is a monumental novel written by Frank Herbert, um, an American author, and published in 1965. That's four years before we went to the moon, just so you get an idea of how revolutionary this book is. When we think about space opera, our mind instantly goes to Star Wars, and there would not be any Star Wars without Dune. This story takes place in our own universe, except it's tens of thousands of years into the future, after humanity has had to fight itself multiple times, and more importantly, against thinking machines. Ultimately, the race of men was nearly wiped out, but they prevailed, and that's why you don't see a single computer or robot in the whole of the story, if you look closely. Through selective inbreeding, Breeding. I meant selective breeding, not inbreeding. I don't think incest was involved. I don't think. I don't know. Anyway. A quasi-religious uh, organisation called the Bene Gesserit has ensured that there is an elevation of human abilities and all computations that you see uh, during the story are done by the Mentats, by humans. In this future, humanity has resorted back to feudalism, so there are an array of different noble houses that respond to a, an emperor. In Dune Part 1, we see how the Emperor, along with the machinations of uh, House Harkonnen, have given the stewardship of a planet called Dune, or Arrakis, to House Atreides. And the importance of this planet is, not, is obvious, not only because it's the title of the, of the whole series, it is because it contains the Melange. It's the only place where the spice can be harvested, and this is a dust, a powerful dust that enhances cognitive human abilities and also powers space travel. However, we soon see how Baron Harkonnen has plotted with the Emperor to betray Duke Little Atreides all along. He is the father of our protagonist, Paul Atreides. House Atreides is essentially wiped out in the massacre, with the exception of Paul Atreides and the Lady Jessica, who is the de facto wife or concubine of the uh, late Duke. Now, it is important to mention that Jessica is a member of the Bene Gesserit, and the Bene Gesserit are always exclusively women. Except she's teaching Paul the ways of the Bene Gesserit because she thinks that he is the chosen one, the Kwisath Haderach. So the story is picked up exactly from this point after the massacre and the betrayal when Paul and Jessica escape into the desert with the help of the Fremen, the indigenous population of the planet. Okay, I'm here, I'm here. Ever since I watched the first instalment of um, this, let's call it two-parter, I knew that that's exactly what Denis Villeneuve was envisioning. He wanted first a, a very, well, it, people can say slow, and it was a bit slow, but it was an introductory piece. It was um, a, a way of, a, a taster for us to, to see the, the lore of the world, the uh, amazing cinematographic uh, skills and techniques that he was going to employ, the characters, the, 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 the plot, the tone of the story. If anything, I think the first part was too faithful uh, to the book, and it was scene by scene, beat by beat, the same sort of um, story however i think it, he was he had this long vision he wanted something to introduce the world to his, his his way of telling the story and he knew that the story was too big to be encompassed in only our um, our accepted length of 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 uh, feature film he took a page from fantasy and went against the this culture of constant content consumerism that we live in today and he took his time to take this to tell the story and i think that 
is the best thing that could have happened for this adaptation. I am so glad for that. As a result, Dune Part 2 has a super dynamic plot. There's a lot of tension, there's suspense, there's romance, there's, there's amazing, incredible battle scenes and this, this flavour of eerie epicness that, that, that Denis Villeneuve instil instills in his movies. So with perfect pacing we see how Paul has to confront his destiny in becoming the Kwisad Haderach and how that contravenes all of his desires. So it's a duty versus desire. There's the, the Romans subplot, there's the tension, the constant, constant ex external pressures done beautifully. We get to see the bigger picture, we get to see the Emperor and we get to see the Reverend Mother of the Bene Gesserit uh, near the Emperor and how this this games that they are playing, that they, they seem to be behind everything. And I'm very reluctant to say anything else because I really don't want to um, inadvertently give you some spoilers. Really good plot. And let me just say, it has really comical, like really well done humorous releases here and there. So. Really well done. I should like to be equal to you. Maybe I'll show you the way. Off the bat, the casting was astounding. Timothy uh, Chalamet as Paul Atreides, he really grows into the character. Rebecca Ferguson is an amazing lady. Jessica's chilling. It's it's powerful and uh, we see we see uh zendaya doing uh, a very good chani and and he, like euphoria levels of acting um javier bardem uh skarsgård does uh, nightmarish um baron harkonnen and, and, and that's exactly what you want in your villains uh, brother uh, what's that we've got just brolin i i could just name names all the florence Pugh. Christopher Walker, Walkins? Walker? I don't know his name. I feel like I also need to mention the sandworms in this section. I think they are a character of their own. Uh, the, the, the shy Hulud, uh, called by the Fremen. Um, they are foreshadowed a bit in the first part, but now we get to see them in all of the magnificent, horrific glory. Even if you are a born hater, even if you have qualms with the adaptation, maybe you have qualms with the pacing of the story, you would have put this scene here, you wouldn't have included this scene, and the characters were a bit wishy, whatever. You have eyes. You can see that the imagery, the, the, the scenery, the landscapes were just incredible i i from from the the massive machines to the eerie levitation i i spent half of the movie with goosebumps at times it was sort of went into this this flavor of cosmic horror from from alien and, and it was so masterfully done the soundtrack i mean don't don't get me started on the soundtrack hans zimmer i think deserves a statue for what what he has done for for modern cinema throughout his career the the sounds are reminiscent of this Arabic sort of like inspired world uh, with with this his own blend of awe inspiring you know epic space stuff. <laughs> Mark my words, this movie is going to get a lot of awards for sound mixing, soundtrack, um, visual effects, scenery, landscape, that sort of thing because it was just incredible incredible something that struck me was the the immensity of it the scale the the, the from the interminable uh, desert to the massive machines the, the sandworms the ships um if you have megalophobia you're gonna you're gonna struggle with this one like for real now what you might take away from this video is just the ravings of a nerdy fun boy um about a film that he likes but but if i can appeal to reason this is what brian herbert frank herbert's own son had to say about the adaptation about this two films by denis villeneuve and i think i'm going to end the vid video with these words i think that summarizes everything perfectly do yourself a favor block out an evening and watch these two movies back to back and have an incredible immersive experience 
Let me know down below in the comments if you're excited for the movie or if you have seen it without spoilers what you think of it. And I'll see you in the next one.